The following episode describes tales of the supernatural. Listener discretion is advised. Was it a poltergeist rocking the walls of a three-decker home on Douglas Street? Did Worcester have its own haunted house? In the early 1950s, that's exactly what reporters from the Worcester Telegram and the Boston Globe were trying to figure out. The residents of 14 Douglas Street were more frustrated than scared, complaining of rattling windows, picture frames falling off the walls, radios whistling, and even a bed leaping off of the floor. On May 12, 1950, the strong vibrating of the three-story structure could be seen shaking as hundreds of neighbors stood in the street watching what they believed to be something supernatural. Welcome back to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. Today's episode is a bonus for our listeners, a Halloween special straight from Worcester's main south. For the first time ever, Unsolved Worcester explores a local unsolved mystery. It appears to be paranormal activity. Starting in the late 1940s and for several years continuing, the residents of the three-decker home at 14 Douglas Street complained of a violent shaking, described by one tenant as a pounding like that of a battering ram. Building inspectors turned off the gas, water, and electricity. But amazingly, the shaking continued. There are a few theories as to why 14 Douglas Street felt like living above an isolated earthquake. Could it have been something as simple as a prank? Or was it the spirit of a lost relative following through on a haunting promise? Unsolved Worcester takes a deep dive every Tuesday into the unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's Detective Unit and the Massachusetts State Police. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com and on your favorite podcast streaming platforms. Check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on the Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. On Saturday morning, May 13, 1950, a headline on the front page of the Worcester Telegram read, Shaking House, a Mystery and a Headache to Tenants. The story describes around 1,000 people standing in the street outside the three-decker at 14 Douglas, causing a traffic jam off nearby Cambridge Street all in an effort to witness the reported shaking house. The following day, according to the telegram, another 500 people sat in front of the house for three hours while investigators went wall to wall and floor to floor trying their darndest to figure out what was wreaking havoc. 
The electricity, water, and gas were all turned off while inspectors checked beams, posts, staircases, siding, and foundations and floors. Ultimately, coming up empty for an explanation, the city of Worcester was puzzled. What in the world could be causing the shaking? While seemingly considering his options as to what to investigate next, according to the telegram, the shaking jolted the city's senior housing inspector, Edward McCann, from a chair on the first floor. The three-decker tenants, the Hallahans on the first floor, the Hansons on the second floor, and the Singletons on the third floor, said the shaking had started on Good Friday that year and had typically lasted three hours late in the evening and for as long as five hours at the start of each day. By 1950, the tenants had lived through this intermittent quake for about three years. Each shaking lasted only a minute, but occurred nearly every hour between 9 p.m. to midnight and again between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. for weeks at a time each year. Each level of the three-decker was riddled with cracks in the walls, plaster was falling, floors were sinking, radios on the second floor were making bizarre whistle sounds. Dishes were being tossed from cabinet shelves. The laths in the walls were bent toward the outside of the home like the walls were trying to escape. And as the telegram put it, the doors were straining like someone was trying to rip them right off their hinges. But all the neighbors nearby, they weren't affected by any shaking. Their homes didn't move at all. Sometimes, however, the couple living next door at 12 Douglas Street would be woken up by the noise coming from their neighbor's home during one of the intense shaking fits. News of the shaking three-decker at 14 Douglas Street spread quickly. The day before the telegram's report on March 12, 1950, the Boston Globe's headline read, Police Assigned to Ghost Hunt in Worcester. The Globe described the shaking event as a possible poltergeist. Describing the paranormal event as pranksome spirits who throw furniture and objects through the air and make disturbances in haunted houses. Citing British researchers, the Globe says the phenomena usually occur when teenagers are around and described a police detail around 14 Douglas Street as an assignment to stop teenagers from tossing a barrage of rocks at the house. According to the City of Worcester's records, the three-decker was built in 1900, but a report in the telegram states the home had been constructed in 1920. Sixty-eight years later from their initial report, the telegram and gazette checked back in on the spooky lore of 14 Douglas Street in 2018, following a letter from a relative of the Hallahans the first floor residence of the three-decker when the shaking was at its peak in the early 50s. The relative, a great niece of the Hallahans, said growing up she had heard ghost stories about the house. The niece's story goes like this. Great uncle Michael Hallahan a Worcester firefighter married a woman from Ireland against his mother's wishes. Michael's mother wanted him to marry a young woman, Lizzie Monahan, who lived across the street from the family on Douglas Street. 
When Michael married another woman instead of Ms. Monahan, his mother vowed to come back and haunt him. And the family legend stuck. It was Michael's mother shaking the walls of 14 Douglas Street, still upset that her son had married the wrong woman. But that, of course, isn't the only theory behind the shaking house. According to the TNG, the owner of the home in 1950 was uh, Victoria Chavour. One of Victoria's relatives told the telegram that after years of searching for the cause of the tremors, the plumber found what he believed to be a cruel, practical joke behind a bathroom mirror. The Chavour's family story goes like this. First floor resident wanted to buy the three decker from Victoria, placed a washing machine motor behind the wall of the bathroom to make it seem like the house was haunted and to get the price of the house down. In 1950, the Hallahans lived on the first floor. The Hallahans' niece told the telegram that once Michael and his wife Nora moved out of the first floor, the three deckers stopped shaking. But it's been several decades, and these family stories have a way of being misinterpreted, mistold, and misunderstood. So who's to say? Today, the three-decker at 14 Douglas Street still stands, but oddly enough, it's been bought and sold five times in just the past 23 years. What do you think really happened at 14 Douglas Street? More than 70 years later, the mystery still stands, and we'd love to hear what you think about Worcester's Haunted House. Leave your comments or messages on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. From all of us at Unsolved Worcester, Happy Halloween. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. If you enjoyed listening to our Halloween special, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episode will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and select all and you'll get a notification of when the next episode is ready. Come back on November 7th for Episode 4 of Unsolved Worcester Season 6 and the Unsolved Murder of Juan Carlos Gonzalez. On February 10th, 2001, Juan was shot and killed during an after-hours party on Chandler Street. Police believe there were as many as 30 witnesses to his murder. None have come forward with information. Special thanks to Alex London at the Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, and our sponsors for making this possible. Information on the haunted house at 14 Douglas Street was gathered from two sources, the Worcester Telegram and Gazette and the Boston Globe. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom Labelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. To find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities, visit www.arts.gov.